In this video, we're going to look at the concepts of vectors and vector addition. So the best way for me to explain what a vector is, is to explain the difference between a vector and a scalar. A scalar is a quantity that doesn't have any direction, and a vector is a quantity that requires a direction and it has a direction. For example, when you talk about mass, let's say that you're talking about 10 kilograms, that's, that's a value of a mass, that's a, that's a quantity of an object, but it doesn't have any direction. When you talk about the weight, the weight actually has a direction because it's going downwards. So you can say perhaps that the weight is 500 newtons. And in that case, the direction is going down. When we look at the representation of vectors, we're gonna see that vectors are going to be represented with an arrow. So uh, frequently you're gonna see that this is going to be, let's say, the vector F1, representing the force, let's say F1. And it's going to have a magnitude. The magnitude is going to be the length of that line or represented by the length of that line, right? And it's also going to have a direction and the direction is often represented with angles. So let's say that we have this angle, let's say that is 40 degrees uh, with respect to the horizontal. So vectors again are going to have a magnitude and they're also going to have a direction. Scalars, on the other hand, are going to only have a magnitude. Now, one of the things that we often forget is the idea of units. Both of them, vectors and scalars, have units. So I like to say that vectors have magnitude and direction, but they also have units in, in most cases. We're gonna see a few exceptions in which the vectors have no units. And scalars also have units, right? So only have magnitude and of course, and units. That's ex uh, particularly important when we're, when we're looking at engineering solutions, and when we're looking at statics. All right, so now we, we see what the definition of a vector is, right? It's something that uh, requires a magnitude, but it also has a, uh, a direction, right? So an example of that uh, is, for example, forces on a cable. When you see a force in a cable, you're gonna see that the direction is along the cable, right? And the amount of the force is going to be the magnitude. Uh, when you look at, for example, at velocity, the velocity of a car has a magnitude, let's say 30 miles per hour, uh, but it also has a direction, right? And whether or not the car is moving forward or backwards, for example. So all of those are examples of vectors. Another example of a scalar quantity, is, let's say temperature, right? So let's say that the temperature uh, that you're measuring is 150 degrees Fahrenheit. In that case, it's a scalar quantity. Now, when we're looking at scalars, when we're looking at scalar addition is, is simple, right? When we say, let's, uh, let's say 10 kilograms plus five kilograms, we're gonna end up with 15 kilograms. You just add the numbers. Now when we're looking at, at, at a vector addition, things are a little bit different because the direction of those vectors does matter. So let's say that if, if I have a force going down and I have a force going horizontally, let's say to the right, my resultant force is neither going to be vertical or down or horizontal. It's going to be a combination of those. So when we add these vectors, we actually have to take care of that direction. Let me give you an example. So when we look at vector addition, we're gonna see that the direction matters, right? So the direction matters. Direction is important. And what we're gonna see, oh, let's change that to white. So let's say that we have 
this uh, vector, they can again represent forces. Let's say this F1. And by the way, this arrow on top of that F indicates that that quantity is a vector. I'm gonna do my best to try to always use arrows when I'm looking at vectors. And let's say that I have um, now another force F2, and that other force F2 is going to be going that direction. Let's say that the magnitude of that force F1 is 100 newtons. The magnitude of this force F2 is, let's say, 300 newtons. So we cannot say that if we want to add those two vectors, the resultant force is 400 newtons because the directions are not in, in, in uh, uh, the direction of the two forces are not the same. What we'll need to do is take these two vectors and consider that direction. And to do that, there are two different ways that uh, are often um, used. One of them is what is called the uh, heads to tails method. So let me put it in red. And what we need to do in this heads to tail is you take one of those vectors, let's do the 100 Newton force in here. And then what we do next is to take the next vector and move it in such a way that the tail of the vector is, of the, sec of the second vector is on the head of the first vector. So this would be the 300 Newton force. And by the way, the magnitudes there in the drawing are not really matching, right? The second vector should be much longer than the first one. Now the resultant vector, the resultant vector is going to be connecting the head of the, uh, or the tail of the first vector with the head of the last vector. And that will be my R. So in this case, I have that R is representing F1 plus F2. By doing this, now I'm considering not only the magnitude of the vector, but also the direction of those vectors, right? Now the magnitude of R can be calculated, and that's going to be the length of this vector, right? The length of this. And then direction is going to be perhaps described with an angle, perhaps an angle with respect to the vertical. That can be used to describe the direction. So that's one of the methods, the heads to tail method. Now let's look at the second method, with, which is the parallelogram law. So when we look at the parallelogram law, What we're going to see is the following. You take one vector, let's say this uh, 100 Newton force, then you take the second vector, say this is 300, and again my magnitudes are not going to match. Sorry about that, but otherwise my, I'm going to run out of space. <laughs> And then what you do is you create a parallelogram. What that means is you take a line that is parallel to that 100 Newton vector, put it in the head of, of the other vector, and do the same with the 300 Newton vector. And your resultant is going to be between the tails of the two vectors and the opposite uh, location of your parallelogram. So that's going to be my vector R. Once again, here we're representing that the vector R is equal to F1 plus F2. And by forming that parallelogram, we are taking care not only of the magnitude, but also the direction of the forces, right? So, in summary, what we've seen in this video is that vectors and scalars are different, that vectors have a magnitude and direction, and in most cases, we're going to have units with those vectors. 
and that to be able to add those vectors, we cannot simply add the magnitudes. We also need to take in consideration the direction of those vectors. And to be able to do that, we can either use the heads to tail method or the parallelogram law.